Well, as a young man, the last thing Cheyenne wanted to do was follow in his father's footsteps and become a pastor. But after Cheyenne went to a party, he had a change of heart. Today, he's an international evangelist. Cheyenne's still going strong after over 30 years of ministry. He's the senior pastor of Harvest Rock Church, now H Rock Church in Pasadena, California. Co-founder of The Call and author of several books, he also networks with thousands of churches worldwide through Harvest International Ministries. Pastor Che desires to help people get closer to God and fulfill their God-given destinies. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, the author of the book, When Heaven Comes Down, Cheon. It's great to have you back. Well, Terry, it's an honor for me to be here again. Thank you. I, I want to mention that when you were growing up and your dad was a pastor, you wanted absolutely nothing to do with the church. Why? Well, I wanted nothing to do with Christianity yeah. because I rejected Christianity. I got involved in Eastern religion, and I was chanting away, and uh, I was into Zen Buddhism. Was that an identity search for you, or were you Absolutely. angry about something? No, I was or? so insecure, and I wanted to find uh, my own identity apart from my parents, uh -huh. and I was so rebellious, <laughs> got involved in the whole drug hippie culture. I could relate to CJ as he was on. Yeah. And yet, in the midst of searching, I think God honored the sincere quest of my heart. Mm -hmm. And so when I cried out and I said, God, I don't even know if you exist. I was an agnostic. But if you do exist, reveal yourself to me. And I had an encounter with the glory of God. The glory of God came into that room. Of course, I didn't have definition back then. Right. But the presence of God came in, and I had such a revelation of Jesus. I felt his presence envelop me to the point that I could not stop sobbing and weeping. And Terry wasn't just there. For the next three days, I could wow. not stop weeping because I realized how much he is a God of love. Well, what brought you to that place where here you are, you don't want anything to do with it, you're practicing another form right. of religion. What brought you to that place where you were willing to get down on your knees and cry out, God, if you're real? Well, ultimately, I believe because my parents were praying for me. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad and sure. mom, we had a huge uh, communication gap and cultural gap during the 70s, during the whole Jesus uh, culture revolution and plus you know a cultural gap I forgot the language and so there was a real communication problem but there's no gap when it comes to prayer yeah. and my mom would and dad uh, would pray for me and my grandparents who uh, were the founding elders of Young Knock Presbyterian which is the world's largest Presbyterian church wow. in the world today 80,000 members and they're very golly and my grandmother is still alive. She's 97, and she prays for me to this day. And by the way, if your grandmother is praying for you, you don't have a chance. You will, <laughs> you will get saved. And I would so, agree with that. I, my grandmother <laughs> prayed for me, too, while I was out in the far country. Yeah, so even though I was away, but there was no question I was searching. Mm -hmm. I wanted the truth. And I think deep down inside, everyone wants to find identity. They want to know if God exists. And they want to know the truth. If there is a heaven, I want to get there. And yeah. And so uh, that's what happened. And I, I just said, God just revealed. I didn't expect him to reveal himself at that moment. I was just praying this prayer audibly, reveal yourself if you're God. I mean, you're God. So you'd never experienced anything like that, like the, the no, presence of the no, Lord coming like upon that. you? Or, uh, what did you think when that happened? Well, I, I didn't know what was going on. And um, in fact, uh, uh, there was no one there to follow up on me, disciple me, explain to me you're experiencing uh -huh. Uh, the manifest presence of God, the Holy Spirit's touching you, none of that. Uh, but I knew that the love was so real. Mm -hmm. It was so real that I went back into the party, told my friends, hey, guys, everything that we're looking for is in the person of Jesus. Wow. So I was preaching the gospel. I'm talking about like a few <laughs> minutes right after my encounter, after I had regained composure because I didn't go in with my tears. But, um, and, but they thought I had flipped out on drugs. I'll bet. <laughs> but within two weeks, I was completely delivered from drugs. And that was the last time, Terry, I've taken wow. drugs in over 30 years. And, and they began to see the change and revivals start to break out among my friends. You know, Shay, um, not everybody has the kind of experience that you had when they come to Christ. But I do think everybody wants to know the reality of right. who Jesus is. And they would love to experience that kind of power. You say that we can do that, that the glory of heaven can come down. Right. How do we get that? Well, first of all, you, you made a very interesting point. Each person's encounter with the Holy Spirit is different. It's interesting, the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus like a dove. Mm -hmm. But upon the disciples, a violent rushing wind, tongues of fire came upon yes. them. The whole place shook. So it's the same spirit, but different, different experience, a different uh, manifestation, mm -hmm. exactly. But I think there are basic principles. I think, first of all, you got to hunger. Because I was hungry. Mm -hmm. I was thirsty. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 5, 6, 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. And so even though as an unbeliever, I was hungering and thirsting for truth. And that's why Jesus said in John 7, if anyone's thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He was not talking to his uh, disciples. He was talking to the community, the Jewish community. Will, right? Exactly. He was giving this invitation to the whole, really, to the world. Come to me and drink, and out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And was talking about the Holy Spirit. So there has to be a hunger. So if people are careless, they could care less about God, and they're not right. Mm -hmm. So we need to pray for those type of people that they do get ripe, and yeah. they do uh, get, uh, that's why we're to be salt. Yeah. and lights mm -hmm. to help them to have this kind of thirst and hunger. And then I think we can learn how to host the Holy Spirit in so many ways. And I say hosting the Holy Spirit because he's the third person. Yeah. And just like you're hosting me and you do such a great job on the show, and we can host uh, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. by repentance, humbling ourselves, Bible promises he'll pour out his spirit if we humble ourselves before him. We have just touched the tip of the iceberg. If you'd like to experience God's glory in your life, check out Che's new book. It's called When Heaven Comes Down. It's awesome. And it is available wherever books are sold. God wants to know you intimately and he wants you to know him intimately.